We're gonna talk about really how to be more efficient, more effective, how to use your time wisely so you can eliminate stress, enhance your energy, your excitement. How many of us notice when we're doing something we love to do, we get energy from it, we get excited versus <laughs> on the flip side, when we're doing something mundane, something we don't enjoy, something that's fun, and we're just kind of, kind of, you know, pushing through something we don't enjoy, there's a way to change your perspective and a way to do it more effectively. So. What you realize when you get into sales is you get a little taste, and then you're like, oh man, this is great. Like, have you ever done that, friends, where you, you got a customer, maybe at a time that you're like, man, is this even working? And then you get a <laughs> customer and you're like, yes, it's working. Well, when you're in sales, you keep getting those little tastes and those little wins. And before you know it, 20 years goes by and you're like, okay, I guess uh, sales is what I do. It's it's going to be my thing. And it's addictive because it's high, it's high risk and it's high, you know, it's an emotional roller coaster. But it is. The reward, John, wouldn't you say there's nothing like it, man? Even I was adamantly opposed to something like network marketing seven and a half years ago, but little did I know that network marketing would turn out to be everything I never knew I always wanted. Mm -hmm. I could translate my sales skills that I had gotten beat up with and, and to, to learn and develop. And guys, if you're getting beat up out there, if you're getting ignored, if you're being told that you're, you know, you're dumb at what you do and you're not like, you're never gonna make it. Like these are all, I want you to know that the skills that you're, if you're still here and you're getting all that, you are developing the skills that it's gonna take you to your next greatest wins. I promise you that. What you think is breaking you is actually what's building you. Mm. for what's next i swear it did anybody think that like when you got into network marketing you, you started realizing that it was actually really freaking hard <laughs> somebody got you all hyped up and you're like yeah man going right to the top i saw those people on stage and i'm like i can do that like i've got experience right sure i surely if i can sell i can do that P.S. If you're thinking it's only your sales skills that's going to make you win, that's only a teeny piece of the puzzle, friends. Mm -hmm. If you're telling yourself that you're not winning in network marketing because you're not good in sales, you got to cut that shiz out. You got to rewrite that narration in your head. Everything is figure outable. Mm -hmm. And do you know what was really hard for me? Besides learning, oh, I have to, you know, inspire and encourage and influence, you know, a team if I want to help them be successful and then you know, leverage my own success. I have to be able to do that. That's hard because you got like the breakfast club of individuals saying, I'm doing network marketing now. Guess what? It's a volunteer army, friends. Quit having expectations of people. What I found personally hard was what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. And that was, okay, when you're your own boss and you manage your time, I remember this feisty dude scrolling past my news feed years <laughs> ago by the name of Mr. Melton, sponsored ad. He goes, if you can't do this part-time, you ain't going to be able to do this full-time. I remembered that, but I didn't fully understand what it meant. And for me, years later, when I finally hit six figures and I got the car and the trips and the things that I thought were going to be like, I will have succeeded when I this. I will have gotten there when I get this paycheck. When I get on this trip, I will have made it. And I'm telling you, I never felt more stressed mm -hmm. and anxious and scattered than when I had quote unquote done the thing. And then I real I remembered what John said. He said, if you can't do this part time, you're not going to be doing it full. You can't do it full time. Now I know what that means. When you if you're doing this part time, I, I, alongside your main hustle, we got to be able to maximize your time with the right things that are actually, I like to call them needle movers, yep. with the right needle movers that over time are going to give you the results you deeply desire. And maximizing our time is so huge. I mean, John, how often do you hear from people, I just don't have time, or even network marketers on our teams, I just wish I had more time. Like, how often do you hear that? Oh, all the time. And the problem is they're not being intentional with the time they have. And that's, it, it's almost better when you don't have a lot of time because then you're like, 
forced into doing things efficiently and, you know, spending the little bit of time you have on the things that are going to, like you said, move the needle because those income producing activities, it's, it's always phase one. It's always talking to new people. You know, I just did a post about this in the team group. It's like, if you're not talking to three, five, 10 new people, new people every day about your products or opportunity, and I don't care if it's warm market, cold market, you know, people you barely know, people you don't know, people you know really well. I don't care if it's talking about the products, talking about the business. It's it's always consistently having conversations as network marketers. We're professional conversation starters. And a lot of us are just, you know, we're caught up in our own stinking thinking, our own limiting beliefs. And I get it, by the way. I was there too. I was terrified of public speaking. I was really nervous to reach out to some of my chicken listers. It's it's very normal to have these fears and insecurities and worrying about what other people think about you. But that's why we train. That's why we show up. That's why we are in your face right now telling you to get over your damn self because there's a lot of people out there that need to hear your message, your story, your perspective, your your personality is different than Jen's. Jen's is different than mine. Mine is different than yours. And we're all different. We all have different skills. We all have different personalities, different backgrounds and levels of, of experience. And we can go out there and make an impact, make a difference, but we have to open our mouth. And we have to stop with the, the fear of judgment and the fear of failure. And actually for some of you, the fear of success. You know, you really have to work on that abundant mentality and realize that God makes new people every day. There's never going to be a shortage of humans. And even if your warm market sucks, I know a lot of people say, my warm market sucks. I'm not getting good engagement, which by the way, engagement is down for everybody right now. It's just what it is. But guess what? Before we had social media, before we had engagement in marketing, you know, social media, creating curiosity, attraction marketing, we just had to like, you know, call people on the phone. I know it's weird, but like your smartphone, you can actually like make phone calls. Now I rarely do them as well. So I understand that you forgot that that's what it does. But the point is reaching out to people, right? Proactively reaching out and just popping the question every day. Hey, Sam, I'm doing something new, something I'm excited about. I don't know if you're open or not, but I'd love to share it with you. I think you're amazing. You, you popped in my head. I saw one of your posts. I know that we've always talked about making money together, whatever. The point is, if you're creating those conversations every day and you're being intentional, like Jen said, you're doing it on that part-time basis and you're going, you know what? I'm just going to focus on these two, three, four, five things with the limited time I have. In fact, I would recommend you all create a schedule, kind of like if you have a job, right? Say you're bartending on a part-time basis, right? You have to be at work at a certain time. You have to be there till a certain time. You can't just like not show up for work. And you're never going to get rich as a bartender. That's literally working for someone else, building their business. So with that being said, understand that if you start treating this like a million dollar opportunity, you start treating this like a business you invested $50,000 into, $100,000 into, you would start showing up differently. And if you had a schedule and you held yourself accountable and you made it so that, hey, I'm going to take this seriously. And maybe you got investing in yourself, getting serious, taking action, being consistent, being disciplined and getting to a point of where you literally just, you don't have an addiction to the outcome. You don't care if you're getting rejected, if you're getting ignored, ghosted, if people are quitting because you go, you know what? I've got the end in mind. Yeah. I've got the end in mind and I'm not caught up in the minutia of the daily grind and the, 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 the lack of results or the lack of responses because I know that I'm going to do this until, until it works. I am probably one of the few people that feels wholeheartedly batches passionate about the fact that a DMO, do, do you guys know what a DMO is? A daily method of operation does not equate to an IPA. An mm -hmm. IPA, are in, those are income producing activities. A DMO for me, it manages both my, it prioritizes both my life mm -hmm. and my personal, my family, my spiritual, my health, my life and my business. And the reason I came up with this and literally started parenting myself, PS, way harder to parent myself <laughs> than my four children under the age of eight. Why this should matter to you is because practice and discipline the DMO for your life, for your business before you actually need it. Mm. I didn't know I was going to be like giving birth in a box under the stairs and now I have all these kids. I know I always joke about having a litter, but guys, I didn't know I was going to have all these kids, but I started exercising a DMO and man, it's not hard. It was harder than I thought it would be. 
literally what I learned was that my progress favors the prepared. Progress mm -hmm. favors the prepared. Anybody that's winning right now, now I'm not talking winning like a big pop. You guys all see those people like blow up real quick and they're like, where'd they go? I'm not talking about those people, those unicorn people. I'm talking about people that have consistently, consistently shown up over time, done the things, and they consistently win over time. Those people, they are prepared. Their progress is tied to how well they're prepared. Guys, when you prepare, you develop a confidence about yourself, like the belief that you're ready to take on whatever task it is, even if it makes you nervous. Even you're like, oh my God, I got to... I got to reach out to these, you know, these people that I've been thinking about and I, I just know they'd be so great. I want to share with them what I have. You're nervous about it, but you also feel like, okay, I can do this. It gives you a certain energy mm -hmm. when you're prepared that translates to hopefully future sales. And honestly, all sales is, is a transfer of energy, my friends. Like, are you buying what John and I are, are selling you right now? Because we're trying to sell you on the idea and the importance of learning, you know, becoming a master of your time. Like think about how you feel before you go on a trip and you're packing your bags the night before, you're getting, getting the kids all ready, you know, doing all the things that normally you would do if you're a mama, like you're getting all the things ready that dad probably gonna forget, getting it all ready, packing your bag, got all the extra chargers and then they got your carry on. You can barely sleep that night, right? Why? Because you got an energy an excitement in you that you prepared. You got everything all li lined up. What if you could take that same energy and get prepared with your business? Mm -hmm. What would your day look like if you got it a little, you know, bulleted the night before and then prioritized those things, those needle movers? Got to do this tomorrow. These, these are, this is my to done list. It's getting done tomorrow. <laughs> How would, what would that do for your energy? And I'm not saying it's not gonna be hard, but I'm saying when you're prepared, progress will always be in your future. It's such a good point too. And it becomes habitual, right? Winning becomes habitual. Yeah. And it, it's just like little things like this. Like in the morning, every morning I make my bed. Now, do you need to make your bed? Technically, no. I guess you don't need to. For me, I need to. I feel, I feel like discombobulated. I haven't used that word in a while. That's a good one. I feel discombobulated if my bed is not made. Our bed, Nadia and I, right? Like, and I know that's my responsibility. Like, that's the thing that I do, right? Sometimes I got to kick Nadia out of the bed so I can make it, right? Because I got to go somewhere and I'm like, but that bed needs to be done. It's like, a, it's just want to check off the to-do list, right? The to-done list. I love that. And you should have that same mentality with your IPAs, with your income producing activities. Like, I ain't going to bed until I pop the question five times today. Right. And then eventually, again, you feel weird not doing it. It's the same thing with videos. I feel weird when I do. I don't do a video during the week. Weekends, I'm not doing videos. Right. But during the week, I'm like, oh, I'm like kind of like itching a little bit. What's wrong with, oh, I do a video. Right. I got to get it. I got to get some stuff on my test. I got it. I got to do it. I got to show up. And I think eventually, even if you're terrified of doing videos or prospecting or follow up, ATM and your face off, right? Doing group chats, whatever it is, right? Branding yourself. Like there's things that like we know we need to do, personal development, right? You start making different decisions every day, different choices instead of, you know, instead of listening to music and listening to someone else live their dream, listen to a podcast that's going to help you grow into the person you need to become to create the success you desire, right? Like you're all worthy of success. You just don't deserve it yet. You haven't paid the price. You haven't shown up. You haven't done all the things. And I really think that most of us just get in our own way because we're overwhelmed. Listen, you're overwhelmed because it's new. Right. It, this is a lot of new information. It's new conversations. Do you want to be underwhelmed? Like this is it? This is it? No, this is right. You're going to be. I remember we first started learning about internet marketing, social marketing, social media, whatever, like building a brand. And it was so overwhelming. Like it was like every conversation and topic. I'm like, I have no idea what these people are talking about. And a year later, literally a year later, Jen, we were teaching that stuff. This is where you just have to faith it till you make it and just say, you know what? I'm just going to keep doing the things because you know, if Jen and John have the results I want and they're telling me to do these things, maybe I should just like do it and stop like over processing and over analyzing it and just take action and understand, like you said, everything's figure outable.
every time, every time we do something that seemingly was really hard at first, it becomes less of a daunting task. Like, and you start to, you start to feel a sense of control. Yes, and dependability that mm. you can count on yourself. My friends, if there's something I would love to implore all humans with is that when you learn to be able to count on you, it doesn't matter what's happening in the world. It doesn't matter what's happening in the economy or the recession or, you know, the, that, that uh, we won't go down that trail. That's a whole other conversation. But <laughs> externally, Anybody feel a sense of uh, lacking control? Anytime I feel lack of control, I'm like, nope, I got to revisit my DMO. It simply means that my priorities got a little tangled, got to sort it out, trim the fat and get back to work. When you feel that way, like you don't have control, what does it do for your energy? Like when you just think off the top of your head, how do you feel about that when mm. you don't feel in control? I want you to feel like you are in control of what happens next. When you discipline yourself and you start exercising that DMO that, you know, you're not so great at it at first. You kind of suck at it. I was horrible at it. But when you start, when you continue to exercise it, you learn to depend on you. And no one can take that away from you. And you know what else? You then prove to yourself that you actually do have control. Yeah. So down the road, your any excuses that get in the way of why you didn't show up or why you didn't do the thing, you can't argue with yourself when you know you can get it done.